Good morning and welcome. Welcome to the service where we do not speak as if we were God, but that we speak to God. A service of prayer, a service for peace, a service of meditation. We welcome, of course, all of those on Zoom as well. You're a part of our family. Uh, so please, you know, be in touch um, and we will be in touch back. Um, we're so glad that you're here, all of you. And welcome no matter what you believe. Welcome no matter what you do not believe. Welcome no matter what you have done. And welcome no matter what you have left undone. Welcome no matter who you are. And welcome no matter who you love. You are welcome here because this is not just our church. This is the Church of Christ. And in Christ's church, everyone is welcome yesterday if you were living in downtown toronto you probably heard fighter jets going overhead and it is certainly a sign of our times that when i heard them i didn't think isn't the air show over i thought war in fact it was just the opening of the argos game so such are our times Make clear the path before us, O Christ. Illuminate the ways that lead to peace. You, O Word, are a lamp for our feet, the guiding light within. The light of Christ, the light of our world. Thanks be to God. Announcements. Ashwin. Thanks, Sherry, and thanks, everyone. Um, I'm actually here to uh, announce, this will be just a few minutes, our season of commitment. So last year, we had the season of caring, and uh, now we're back with the season of commitment. Uh, I want to start by thanking um, you for your ongoing commitment. Uh, Brad has been here for over 30 years, Sherry over five years. Uh, we have our current board and circles, and uh, most of you have uh, also served in many capacities. Uh, we have our commitment to our social justice causes, most recently with what is happening, as Sherry noted, in Israel and Palestine. It could be more broadly through the world. Um, you know, our, our prayers and our actions um, are, are what matter, matter most. And uh, we also have a commitment to our spirituality and nurturing our own spiritual and uh, both collective and personal journeys. And we have commitment to our musical program. Uh, Brad and the choir, um, they're emblematic of such commitment and uh, we look forward to some exciting changes ahead. And we have commitment to the building and building community and the future direction of what uh, TSP has to offer. And we have commitment to our finances uh, and we're striving for a sound financial position. So with all of this, I'm asking you to also be committed to inspired change. What does this mean? Uh, well, last week at our board meeting, uh, Doris, through Doris's leadership, uh, the board passed in principle a motion to advance our strategic renewal plan. So this plan is uh, interwoven with our working group 
recommendations and we thank the working group for all the work they've done and it also includes key changes that will allow us to better reach our surrounding communities and uh, increase our revenues. Uh, we'll be presenting this plan and we'll ultimately seek approval uh, for it in the, in the coming weeks and ultimately in the AGM. Uh, but the, the, the work uh, supports our, our focus on increasing revenues and, and our expenses as, as we work, work on both of those and, and that's, that work is currently in flight. And one perfect example would be holding as an example, uh, I think we plan to have an auction, uh, an auction over the coming year, a significant fundraiser or something like an auction that would be tied to our 135th anniversary. And, and imagine this being something that connects us to the broader community. Uh, a lot of this change is exciting and you know, possibilities are endless. So over the next year though, there'll be a lot of opportunity to get involved. And lastly, there are financial comp contributions. Uh, Bob introduced, you know, one idea, the idea was maybe sharing uh, that payment you received from the climate action incentive uh, plan, that payment that you could have up to $500 if you could consider at all uh, sharing some of that with us, you know, that would really be greatly appreciated. And, uh, and then finally, Dan, Dan, uh, Dan Main, he, uh, he did a lot of work and now in the back in the narthex, we have the envelopes for the season of commitment, but also new this year is a Google form where you can uh, either uh, pledge existing or increasing contributions or new contributions and also your time and energy. So uh, a lot of things ahead to get, get involved and if we can capture those in those pledge forms, either electronic or through the envelopes, that would be greatly appreciated. And, um, and then, so then really just lastly, thank you, thank you for your commitment, your support, and we look forward to inspired change. Uh, the, the, so there's an email, do you mean the form itself? Oh no, the, the auction, it, it's just an idea that we, we would plan for, but uh, I think one great, you know, one great option would be to do both. And, you know, Sher Sherry has a lot of many strengths and, uh, you know, we haven't asked her yet, but if, if I can see, I can see, I can see her uh, leading an incredible live auction. So uh, thanks a lot. And we, we would, you know, welcome comedy there too, Noah, if you have any of that. All right, thank you. Good morning. Um, again, for some of you that are new, um, my name is Bob Severia. I'm the treasurer of TSP, and I've been asked to share some financial information and thoughts for your consideration and input as the board finalizes its TSP strategic plan budget for, and budget for 24. As treasurer, I'll be focusing on financial matters primarily. <clears throat> Today, I wanna to tell you where TSP allocates its spending on program basis. You've seen schedules that say so much for salaries, so much for uh, communications and nurturing. I'm going to do it on a program basis today. I will use the 222 actual results to give you an idea of how TSP spent $443,000 on congregational operating activities. This excludes the mission and support grants that we send to the National Church. It also excludes the musical events that we have that are funded by the choir fund. So basically in round numbers, when allocating salaries, which is the major portion of our costs, to different programs, TSP has spent 107,000 on music in the choir. It spent 99,000 on administration, in which 19,000 is for insurance, 90,000 on pastoral care, 66,000 on worship services, of which 11,000 is the online worship, 26,000 on children's church and the nursery, 19,000 on communications, 17,000 on public witness, 13,000 on governance, and 5,000 on ministry and personnel. Our givings and insurance proceeds for 222 were 280,000. So this produced a deficit of about 163,000. So in addition to being a church, TSP is doing a lot of social justice work. We have a large social footprint in Toronto and we are seen as thought leaders in the United Church of Canada. 
Given the many extremely difficult global issues, the world needs our voice and our presence. We owe it to the next generation to have TSP succeed and be a beacon of good in our world. But we need to pause some of the work we, are, we have given our reduced financial and volunteer resources. I've actually used the word pause because we have been doing a lot. The board is making difficult decisions about our continued deficits and needs your help. My ask this week is to please express your views as to what programs you value most and are prepared to support in your volunteer and financial contributions. The letter you will be receiving in the Narthex will help you do this. But if you wish to email me personally, by all means do so, or email any of the board members in connection with our allocation of resources. Thanks so much. Good morning, I'm Ann Russell, and I just want to say a few words about the upcoming climate justice theme talk that TSP and Bathurst United <clears throat> will be co-hosting after service on November the 12th. So back in February of this year, conversations began uh, with Bathurst United about TSP and Bathurst working together on climate justice issues, similar to the way that the Middle East Working Group and Indigenous Solidarity Groups do. And from my conversations with Jenny Nadelsky at Bathurst, we thought that a good way to start would be to invite some guest speakers in a series of global gossip style talks on various environmental topics. After hearing Helen Mills of Lost Rivers speak at a meeting of my Green Neighbors Group, Jenny suggested that we invite Helen to speak at TSP, and Helen agreed. Our November 12th talk will be all about water. For over 30 years, Helen Mills has been leading interpretive walks to connect people and the waterways that flow through Toronto and teaching about ecological ways to manage water to restore the local environment. You can read more about Helen and her inspiring work and her presentation uh, in the announcements in the bulletin today. I think that having Helen come to speak with us is a great opportunity, and I hope to see many of you there, uh, both in person and as a live Zoom broadcast. Thank you. As we assemble in this holy place, we recognize that for thousands of years, this territory has been a sacred gathering place for many peoples of Turtle Island. We respectfully acknowledge that we are on the traditional territory of several indigenous nations and wish to pay special recognition to the Mississaugas of the credit. The original nations continue to cry out for justice. As treaty people, we commit to listen, learn, and work to right the wrongs of the past and present. As you announce peace with your mouth, make sure that greater peace is in your hearts. May everyone be drawn to the peace, kindness, and harmony in you. For we have been called to this, to heal the wounded, bind up the broken, and recall the lost. In that spirit, let us be mindful when we pass the peace of Christ today, and please don't leave anybody out. If you see someone you don't know, maybe pass the peace of Christ with them first. I'm going to start it all off by saying, the peace of Christ be with you.
Peace, everyone. Isaiah 25, 1 through 9. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. Yasmin Muhammad wrote, Too many people can't tell the difference between innocent Palestinian people and terrorists like Hamas, stop conflating the two. You're not helping. I have family in Gaza. They hate Hamas. They are not torturing women and parading their bodies through the streets. This is evil. It's monstrous. Differentiating between us and them should not be difficult. 
For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin, the palace of aliens a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Avi Lewis wrote, The fog of war lies thick all around, but here's one thing I know. I'm just appalled, appalled by what Hamas unleashed in the slaughter of civilians' homes drenched in terror, appalled by Israel's government on a rampage of revenge, publicly announcing war crimes, appalled by how some sectors of the left are celebrating vengeance, playing right into the hands of right-wing Zionists and others who weaponize anti-Semitism, appalled by how rich countries are reverting to simple-minded, one-sided Israel right or wrongism. The dead and the rubble piling up in Gaza are the bitter fruit of this cynical, simple-minded world view. For you, O oh God, have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy, in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from heat, when the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm. Sibyl wrote, we champion nonviolence because it resonates with the divine principles set by the creator. As rain falls on the oppressed and oppressors, we uphold God's ways. The noise of aliens like heat in a dry place. You subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. Bet Salem wrote, Hamas must release all captives immediately. The Israel government must advance a deal to release them instead of embracing a revenge policy. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, strained clear. The brother of a murdered Israeli wrote, an indigenous person reached out to commiserate, and as do I, call for peace now. The struggle for land rights must not be a violent one, even if it is a just one. I oppose the actions of my government, and I mourn my sister murdered by hate. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Angela wrote, the fourth Geneva Convention forbids the killing of civilians, any civilians. A call for peace now and negotiations to free hostages is a call to simply uphold the laws everyone internationally has agreed to. Then the Lord God will wipe away all the tears from faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in salvation. And from the New Testament, Philippians 4, 1 through 9. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel. And their names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. 
and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. The word of the Lord. Naomi Klein wrote, where there is a gun and a child, we should be on the side of the child, no matter who is holding the gun and no matter who is the child. We pray for peace. John 14, 27. Peace. I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Amen. War always brings up the most difficult of human emotions. Fear, rage, bewilderment. If in the coming weeks and months you find yourself overwhelmed by some of those emotions, I would encourage you to use this meditation or find a similar one take some time away from the news in order to gather 
and clarify your mind, your thoughts, and your spirit. So I'm going to invite you now into a guided meditation, a prayerful meditation for peace. As you sit in your seat, I'll ask you to close your eyes and to focus on your breath. Straighten your back. Breathe deeply in through your nose and exhale slowly through your mouth. Plant your feet firmly on the floor beneath you. Focus on your feet. Feel how they grow roots down into the earth. Now repeat after me. I stand here on the earth. And I stand for peace. Allow now your focus to grow from your feet up your legs through your calves, over your thighs, around your hips, into your stomach. Take a deep breath from your diaphragm. Slowly exhale. Now repeat after me. I feel the warmth of peace radiating deep inside of me. Along with your breath, allow your attention to move into your chest and imagine a clear, calm, blue water there. As you inhale and exhale, your wind makes small, gentle ripples on the surface of the water. And now repeat after me. My breath is the breath of the Holy Spirit. We breathe peace on the face of the deep. Now allow your focus to flow out from your chest to your arms and into your hands and fingers. And as the sensation fills your hands, repeat after me. These are the hands of the divine. They will work for peace. Bring your attention back up through your arms, into your shoulders, onto your neck, and up into your mouth. Feel how your neck and mouth fill with sensation. Inhale slowly and hum quietly as you exhale. And again, repeat after me. This is my voice, and I will speak. Words of peace and comfort to all. Now bring your attention up to your face, around your eyes, and press deep into your forehead. And repeat after me. With my mind, I will plan for peace. With my imagination, I will envision a world at peace.
Now allow yourself to embrace your whole body, feeling every cell. Allow them to each connect to the one beside it. And in a chain reaction, your whole being fuses together as one vibrant, living soul. And repeat after me. This is my whole self. And I will live for peace. Slowly now, open your eyes and look around you. Look around you. See your friends. See your TSP family. See those you've known for years or have just met and dearly love. And know that God loves you and he loves the Palestinian people and he loves the Israelis. And repeat after me. We are all one. And we must live in peace. Remind everyone um, in these difficult times that if you need more prayer, if you need someone to talk to, if you need anything at all, this holy place is there for you. You're a phone call or an email away. We love you. And so as the offering is received, hear these words. This holy church and sacred space stand firm in a world where many desperately seek acceptance, community, Christ. Trinity St. Paul's where we thrive and flourish. Let us give generously as we are able to support this work. The offering will now be received.
to the work of your gospel, O oh God. Use them as you will to strengthen and build your church. Holy God, we offer prayers of gratitude and gifts of resources, confident that your love working in this world can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Amen. We begin our prayers of the people. After each longer period of silence, I will say the words, Holy God, speak with us now in the silence of our hearts. And you are invited to respond with loving God, hear our prayers and in your love answer. We will also have a sung response, which will follow. Today, our response is come and fill our hearts with your peace. More voices 16. Let us begin with that response now. God of love and mercy, we come bearing the weight of our world once again, bloodied by war. Even though we are at a distance, we can feel the confusion, the shock, anger, sadness, and fear of Israelis facing the cruel deaths of loved ones, the anguish of not knowing the pain of trauma revived by this recent devastating attack by Hamas. We understand the rage, the panic, the desire for retaliation and retribution. With overwhelming compassion, we hold the citizens of Israel in our hearts. Help them to mourn, to heal, and find peace. Oh God, we also understand the present panic, fear, and desperation of the people of Gaza, forced to live in an open-air prison, now vulnerable to Israeli attack and humanitarian disaster. Comfort the afflicted, the wounded, the bereaved. Help them find peace. We pray for the children, women and men, the old and young, those held hostage, those challenged by health issues, and those who are differently abled, every human affected by war in the Middle East and around the world. We pray for the oppressed and the oppressors, for the strong and the weak, so that all may understand the root causes of war and have the courage to make peace between God's children. Here in Canada and in this land where Jesus walked, lived and died, 
We know we are called to love our neighbor as ourselves. And even, and most difficult, to love our enemies. Gracious God, give the people of these lands the strength to work through struggles and confusion so that all may live in harmony and peace. O God of justice, peace, and mercy, we know that war and violence are not your way. The call to respect the human dignity of others is core to the teachings of the prophets and wise leaders throughout the ages. But we know it is not easy to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. So we pray for all Israelis and Palestinians who are injured, wounded, hungry, thirsty, sick, and for all those around the world, in Canada and in this community, reacting to different aspects of the tragedy at this time. Bring us peace, O oh God. Holy God, speak with us now in the silence of our hearts. Loving God, hear our prayers and in your love, answer. Dear God, we pray for the doctors, nurses, hospital workers, emergency workers, UN aid workers, Red Cross and Red Crescent staff, and for leaders and agencies around the world who are reaching out to save lives and prevent further devastation in the region. We pray for journalists and photographers documenting these events for the world to know we also pray for the safety and perseverance of our United Church partners in the region. Defense for Children International, Bet Salem, WIAM, the Sabil Palestinian Liberation Theology Center. Oh God, give us the strength as allies and activists to work to end the cycles of destruction, devastation, and bloodshed in this region. We know you hear the cries of people pleading for a just peace. We know that violence cannot drive out violence. We choose life over conflict, truth over lies, love over hatred. God of resurrection and new beginnings, give us wisdom, guide our actions. Make us fearless and passionate for the earth and all its suffering people. Blessed are the peacemakers. Holy God, speak with us now in the silence of our hearts.
Loving God, hear our prayers and in your love, answer. <coughs> In the struggles, losses, and worries of our lives and work, we pray for ourselves and for those we name now, aloud or in silence. We also pray for those in our community and beyond. For Barbara Monroe. For Gan Chi. For Susan Fullerton. For Antonio Fiore and grieving family. For Janet McRae. For Rodolfo Estrada Alcorta. For Iris Horowitz. For Matt Chrisman. For Amber Rollo. For Karen Hilfman Milson. For Kim Thorne. For Penny Regal. For Tony Wise. For Mary Eileen Yoder. For Zaire M. Saeed. For Jill Flewelling. For Debbie LeBlanc. Today we also pray with the Shining Waters Regional Council of the United Church of Canada, of which we are a part, and in particular for the congregations of Central United Church, Unionville for Palgrave United Church, for Aurora United Church. We pray with the churches in Canada and throughout the world that their people may be faithful and their leaders wise. Please join me now in the ecumenical prayers as we pray with the churches in Costa Rica, 
El Salvador, Nicaragua, and Panama. Hear, O oh God, the cries of your oppressed people, the friction and conflict of justice and injustice. Lord, make your light shine upon us and guide us by your spirit, for lives are cast down, but not defeated, afflicted, but resisting despair. Come, Lord, free all people from the yoke of oppression that has been laid upon them. Do not leave them in the hands of their enemies, those who hold justice in contempt. Many put their trust in power and domination, but we, Lord, put our trust in you. Our salvation comes from you. May those who desire harm be confounded. Amen. So, beloved, you know that you are made in the image of the divine. You know that you are a love-filled people and a peaceful people. And you know what your walk should be. You know what your call is. You know you are created for just this day, for just this time. You are here for a reason. Know it and be loved in it. And know that as you walk in that call, as the beloved in the called, that you never, ever, ever walk alone. But that God, the source of all love, and Jesus Christ, who is love incarnate, and the Holy Spirit, love's power, walks with you now and walks with you always. Amen. Please be seated. 